M. Bombay cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our four-year anniversary show. That's right. We're pimped out, baby. Where my bitch is at. I've been saying that all day, driving everyone nuts. It's hilarious. Uh, well, at least I think it's hilarious. But uh, we have on the lines via Skype. But before we get to that, make sure you go to cigarrights.org. Sign up for your membership. Renew your membership. Very, very important. Just coming off the heels of a Glenn Loop interview. So I want to make sure everyone does that, cigarrights.org. Yep, and I will, uh, you know, if you sign up for a new membership, you get a uh, two free cigars I'll send you. Um, but whether you sign up or renew, I will send you an additional cigar if you send me uh, proof of, and it'll be a good cigar too, uh, proof yeah. of your registration or renewal. Excellent. Well, speaking of good cigars, we just lit up our La Flor Dominicana Coronados, oh, which I'm a big re- fan of the old Coronados. They brought back the Coronados to here to tell us about that and more is none other than John Carney. John, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, I should say. Welcome back. Glad to be back, gentlemen. It's uh, it's an honor. I'm reporting live from uh, Houston, Texas, in the La Florida Minicana Mobile Lounge, uh, <laughs> created about 15 minutes ago. So yeah. it's uh, that's awesome. Lynn Loop had this nice office with all these cigar boxes. That's right. right in the back of the van. <laughs> now, John, the, there is a picture that Glenn took of you, uh, and he put uh, Uncle Fester. Next to it, is that? Is he had, that, is he that had right? him and his rep Ed Bowles, who's my local rep in the southeast. Yeah, and uh, they had a picture of Uncle Fester and Lurch from the Adams family. Right, and then next to it, it was like this. Was it doppel doppelganger? Doppelganger. 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 It was John Carney and you Ed Bowles. Know how to that? What's that? Did you know how to pronounce that word? Doppelganger. Doppelganger. This is way too many. This is way more. I, letters I can't than even. That. I think it's a doppel. I think it's doppelganger. We've anyway. not been known for our pronunciation well, here on the show. Speaking of trivia, I want I want to give you the opportunity, John, before we get into talking about other things. I want to give you the opportunity to beat Glenn Loop at something. Yeah. Are you ready for this? Okay. Let's do it. All right. So there are 20 cigar trivia questions that I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to present you with a score. Now, I've given this particular test to three other people. Will Cooper is currently in the lead at 85%. Okay. Glenn Loop is in second place at 60%, and Dave Burke is at 45%. He's from Australia. We give him a pass. But, uh, so those are the standings now. So you have to see if you can beat Glenn Loop's score at Stogie Geek's Cigar Trivia. Let's do it. Okay. It's multiple choice. So first question, when did Connecticut Broadly first appear in the, the cigar market? Was it A, the 1920s, B, the 1820s? C, the 1950s, or D, the last time William Cooper had hair? <laughs> See, this is loaded. I want to say D. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> 1920s. What's your, what is it? Uh, the 1820s. Okay. I'm not going to give you the answers. I'm just going to give you your score, and we're going to reveal the answers at the end. The phrase, close but no cigar, originated from A, Bill Clinton's presidency, B, a cigar being a popular carnival game prize, C, Hollywood movies, or D, what the FDA has been saying? Carnival game prize for the win. Fidel Castro got his own brand in 1966, which was called A, Monte Cristo, B, Castro's Cigars, C, Cohiba, or D, Partagas. C, Cohiba. Where does the term stogie come from? A, George Burns invented it. B, Cuba. C, it's Spanish for cigar. D, Pennsylvania manufacturers who use the term conestoga or covered wagon. Uh, George Burns, A. A thousand tobacco seeds can fit inside of what? A, a pint glass. B, nestled in my chest hair. C, a thimble. Or D, a 55-gallon drum. Uh, A thimble. 
What does hecho a mano mean? A, man hands. B, handmade. C, manly men. Or D, Hector's man. Handmade. B. The Cuban embargo banning the importation of cigars and other goods from Cuba was put into effect in which year? A, 1962. B, 1961. C, 1960, or D, 1992? 1962. The first successful what was commercial. That? <laughs> yeah, ding, ding. Uh, the first I've got my, own, got my own belt. That's right. The first successful commercial crop in the U.S. was cultivated in 1612 in which U.S. state? A, Connecticut. B, Rhode Island. C, Virginia, or D, Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. In 1994, the Cuban government created this organization to handle the global distribution and marketing of Cuban cigars. A, General Cigar, B, Cohiba, C, Habanos S.A., or D, Sweetest Match? C, Habanos S.A. Okay, now we are on to Cigar Trivia, The Plants. There are 10 questions about tobacco plants and uh, the tobacco process surrounding cigars. Cigar tobacco plants require how many hours of sunlight per day? Is it A, 4, B, 6, C, 8, or D, 10? D, 10. The lowest priming of a tobacco leaf is called what? A. Lajero, B. Viso, C. Seiko, or D. Volado? D. Volado. A cured tobacco leaf is brown because what has been replaced by carotene? Is it A. Chlorophyll, B. Cholesterol, C. Caloric acid, or D. Pigment? Chlorophyll. A. What is the country of origin of the Cameroon wrapper? Is it A, Nicaragua, B, Indonesia, C, Cameroon, or D, Ecuador? C, Cameroon. To create a Maduro wrapper, you need what? A Maduro seed plant? B, to use the right fermentation process? C, a Maduro priming? Or D, black paint? <laughs> Uh, B, fermentation process. The topmost priming of a tobacco plant is called what? Is it A, Corona, B, Lijero, C, Viso, or D, Volado? A, Corona. This type of plant was developed in the 1930s by Diego Rodriguez. Named after its birthplace, Vuelta Abuejo region, it is the premier wrapper for Cuban cigars until the 1990s. Is it A, Habano, B, Corojo, C, oh, sorry, I, I messed that up. A, Habano, B, Criollo, C, Corojo, or D, Piloto Cubano? C. Corojo. Primarily used for filler, this Dominican plant derives part of its name from the Spanish word for aroma. Is it A. Piloto Cubano, B. Olor Dominicano, C. San Vicente, or D. Chibao Valley? Uh, San Vicente. Picked or primed tobacco leaves are hung in barns, also known as casas de tabac, for approximately how many days before moving on to the next phase? Is it A, 30 days, B, 7 days, C, 50 days, or D, 60 days? Uh, can you repeat those options, please? Sure. It's A, 30 days, B, 7 days, C, 50 days. Or D, 60 days? I'm going to go with uh, seven days. The first, in the first phase of fermentation, leaves are bunched together in gavilas, or bunches of five or more leaves, then laid in short piles about one to three feet tall, which are called A, burrows, 
B. Pilones, C. Piles, or D. Mounds? Pilones. All righty, John, let's calculate your score. Let me get a drum roll, please. You scored a 70%, beating Mr. Glenn Loop by a full 10%. I'm still in the lead. <laughs> Vindication, yes. <laughs> He, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give it, but he got some of the tougher ones right. I mean, there was a he, couple. You got, of, you got one of them wrong, dude, that you're going to get yelled at for. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you which one to the but, end, yeah, but, but you got one we'll of them the wrong that you're going to get yelled at for. <laughs> I got the curing barn wrong, I think, for the. <laughs> but, but there was one that everyone, including my, I mean, everyone was getting wrong, and he and got, he got it, right. He yeah, but it. you he got did, one that no one yeah. else got, I think, yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Can we discuss these at a later date to see what I actually did get wrong? Yeah, we'll get, you, we'll get you to we're gonna get you the answers because we, we'll get asking them to other folks later on. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah uh, Dave Garofalo is gonna be our next contestant. Oh yeah, so, so that's gonna be your next level. That's a, yeah, we'll see. See, if, yeah, you can. He gets to beat me. See, tell him that he's going against me. I will. Yeah. I believe will, certainly will. Yeah. Um. So where do we want to start? I got a lot of LFD. We don't have enough time for me to ask you all these questions uh, about uh, LFD. John, you're gonna have to come back here in the studio because I got a lot of questions about I, I LFD. Think we're talking about maybe something in December or early in the year, but I'll be available. I actually just moved down to uh, Miami, so I'm no longer a oh, full time. Okay. New oh, okay. Um. So we'll be up in the air. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I want to talk about Lenox. I want to talk about this cabinet number three, which is great. Yeah, the, the new Coronado. Um, and there's been a couple other LFDs that yeah. don't, the one that I got at this event, you got to get me more of these cigars. Dude. What is that cigar? I want more of them. Which it, one? It was the Robusto 1994. Oh, okay. So John, we just smoked the tangos. Oh, nice. The petite and, Robusto. And we, in my opinion, it's the best size you've come out with in that blend. It is, that is the best representation of that blend that I've seen. I had only seen the 1994 that came in the jar. That's the, yeah, the sign. Well, in, the, in the beer stein, rather, yes. But that this is a new one that they came out with the show. Oh. So, so tell first. me about this blend, John. Tell, talk about the one that came in the jar, and then talk about the new ones that are coming out, and if they're different. or do, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. I'm going to talk 99, 1994 first, uh, okay. just a moment. First, uh, the picture that Glenn Loop took of me with Ed Bowles, my sales rep in Virginia. Um, this is the last five years for me have obviously been rough because when I started in the cigar business, uh, people said I looked like Vin Diesel and my nickname was The Chisel. And now I'm Uncle Fester. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So uh, 1994, uh, as we just, you know, as a lot of people know, and if you don't know, it's uh, made to commemorate the first year of us being in the cigar business, uh, which was 1994. And 2014 was the year that this 1994 line was released as a regular production line, and it commemorates that 20th year. Uh, all of those sizes were in our uh, top 20 sellers of last year nationwide. Uh, so this year at the IPCPR show, uh, we did a smaller size of that in the Petit Robusto. Uh, originally, we had the Toro, uh, we have a Toro size, Churchill size, a 58 ring gauge, and then the Robusto, which is the Conga, which coincidentally on uh, uh, Dave's uh, radio show that he does, the Cigar Authority, won the blind taste test against all new releases uh, from 2014. And that's the, size I that's the size I smoked that yeah. I really like. No, no, I haven't the, smoked the, the petite one yet. You haven't smoked the petite no, one? No, I smoked the regular Wait till Robusto the petite size. one, the Tango. Okay, because I smoked the Tango, and I thought that was even better. Mm. There's not many Tangos available because I smoke about eight a day. <laughs> It, oh, it is a great cigar, that Tango. So for me, I'm uh, for me, I'm a medium-bodied cigar smoker. When I started in the cigar business, uh, you know, six, seven years ago, I was all about full-bodied butt kickers. I wanted something that had a ton of flavor on it. Um, and now I've kind of matured into more medium-bodied blends. And the 1994 line for me is a cigar that's uh, very smooth, uh, well-fermented in age, so there's not a lot of palate sticking, I would say, in regards to the flavor profile on it. A really popular flavor profile nowadays has become the palate sticking blast of pepper. Yep. And, and truly that's from under under fermentation. Tobacco should not be inherently um, aggressive um, in regards to flavor profiles. And refined flavor profiles are really what I look for and what I smoke. So the 1994 line has uh, really hit my palate strong. So. I've uh, quite enjoyed that. So, oh, is he frozen there? Nope. Oh, so Johnny's still there? 
Yeah. Okay. So the uh, 1994 cigar that is in the beer stein, is that the same blend as the regular 1994 regular production line? The uh, 1994 beer stein edition, which was released in 2014, uh, was a 6x54 Toro size. Uh, we actually don't make the 50 four ring gauge mm-hmm. in the traditional five sizes that we have um, and it also uses a maduro version of the san andreas now if you oh, okay so the wrapper's different andreas, yeah essentially if you smoke a lot of san andreas a lot of the time you'll see cigars they'll put san andreas out there and it's called maduro uh, as we talked about during the 20 questions i'm going to give away an answer here if people mm-hmm. don't know it uh, maduro is an aging and fermentation process um, that takes time um, the, the reason I laughed at the paint thing is because in years, uh, in, in times past, people used to dye those. Uh, you don't see that as often as you used to to uh, advance the Maduro process and, and create a you know a fake Maduro. Because in, in cigars, time is money. The longer something mm-hmm. sits, uh, the higher opportunity there is to lose some of that crop. Um, and with that, uh, you know, with the less yield, something would cost more. So as you're aging and fermenting something longer, uh, such as a Maduro wrapper takes more time so time is money and that translates into a cigar more complexity more depth to the flavor and a little more sweetness in my opinion uh, but for the 1994 we're using the San Andreas San Andreas is just an inherently dark wrapper once it's uh, cured and once it's aged and fermented it's very dark tobacco so a lot of the time you have San Andreas where people refer to it as just Maduro all the time because it's dark uh, but truly in the 1994 line if you look at the aging and fermentation that goes into the Beerstein edition, that extra year and a half, it's about three and a half years uh, that the Beerstein edition was uh, aged and fermented for that, uh, for that um, San Andreas wrapper. It really does add a darker, te- a darker tone to that mm-hmm. cigar. Uh, it really uh, improves the sweetness and, as I said, the cleanliness on your palate. So the natural edition are the five sizes that we make, the Aldaba, Rumba, Mambo, Conga, and Tango. And then the beer style edition is the six by fifty four Toro. And the, uh, but reg- can- the regular line is still a San Andreas wrapper. It's just not a Maduro San Andreas. It's San Andreas natural. We call it natural. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, as I said, San Andreas just gets called Maduro because it's dark. So you would look at the nineteen ninety four line. Yeah. And I, it's a, just to the naked eye. Someone would say, you know, that hey, that's Maduro. Well, no, it's truly natural. The uh, the aging and fermentation process is what makes us tobacco maduro i mean it just hasn't been aged and fermented that long but it said san andreas is inherently very dark mm-hmm. oh, that's really cool now i want to uh, talk a little about the so the petit robusto sorry one more question 94 is that regular yeah, yeah. production is that can we where can we get that our tango size yes conga rumba mambo and aldaba which are all named after dances uh, celebratory dances are all regular production. The Beer Stein edition was a limited production. Uh, we made only 3,000 uh, 20 count styles of those. So we had uh, 60,000 of those cigars went out there. Uh, those are still, some of those are still around. A lot of retailers have hang, uh, hung on to them. Uh, but the 1994 line itself is regular production uh, and fully available uh, in about uh, 1,300 retailers nationwide. So it's a uh, quite uh quite vast out there and if it's not in the retail that you go to uh, ask for it it's something that we have and uh it's truly uh, it's not our double the arrow so if you have stayed away from some of our fuller bodied cigars over the last you know five to ten years because you don't really want something that kicks your butt towards the end uh the 1994 is straight down the middle very approachable uh and, and it's really a departure from the a full body that we've become known for for the last 10 years now john tell me about the lenox because uh, that's gotten some great reviews. Will and I, uh, well, I really like it. Will hasn't done a full review on it's it yet. Very positive. Um, yeah, but it's it's been very positive. Yeah, that's a uh, Lenox for us is uh, Antonio Gomez, Lido's son, sometimes goes as Tony. Uh, Lido being the owner of our company, for those who aren't too familiar with La Florida Minicana. Uh, that is his third cigar that he's made. The first ones uh, that he had were the Chapter One back in 2013. In 2014, he came out with the cap, uh, Capitulo Dos, uh, which means Chapter 2 in Spanish. And then this year, he went a different direction to go away from that chapter series, which has been very successful for us and still uh, still a huge seller and still getting really great reviews and very popular uh, in the chisel shape. Uh, he wanted to do something a little different uh, with that program. So he, he went with Lenox, which is essentially the knight or the god of the knight in Latin. Um, and uh, really the branding on it, it's the round box uh, with the moon with the LFD logo in it and the clouds, uh, very dark, 
uh, dark colors to it. It's a very big departure from the traditional branding that's become to known on our other brands uh, and other lines. Uh, so on that regards, the branding and marketing of it uh, has struck a chord with a lot of people. Me personally, uh, you know, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. It's very, there's nothing else like it. I was talking about it yesterday with some retailers here in Houston. Uh, when you put it on the shelf or you put it in a retail store, there's truly nothing that looks like it. It stands out on its own and it's very special and unique with that. Then you actually get down to the tobacco side of the cigar itself. Uh, it has that very dark Habano uh, hybrid wrapper out of Brazil called the Cubra. Uh, and that wrapper's aged for about three and a half years uh, to get it to that darkness level that we want. It also has a San Andreas binder on that cigar as well. So we essentially are using two uh, traditional tobaccos that are used as wrapper, uh, as a wrapper and a binder on that cigar. And uh, in the filler, we're using our estate-grown tobaccos that we grow down in the Dominican Republic, and it features our Pelo de Oro, which is a tobacco that we use for our NAS cigar. Uh, and we also use that as wrapper tobacco on the uh, small batch line. Uh, which we create every year and a half to two years. So it, it's a very rare blend uh, with a lot of rare tobaccos. It's very unique it's a flavor departure uh, in regards to uh, what we've traditionally done. And it's also a branding and marketing departure from what we've done on some things. So it's been really nice to have something that's truly different um, and creating a ton of excitement. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, sales is in my last name and uh, the last name of the title I've got. And uh, it's been in reality, uh, on a business side, it's been it's been a headache because it's been incredibly popular. It's striking record, uh, but it's it's a really good problem to have. Uh, you know, it's very very uh, you know we're very very blessed to, to have launched something that's that's creating such an excitement out there. Yeah, I mean the packaging is very appealing, uh, and like you said, it's a departure from your normal packaging, which you know it can be hit or miss for a company. And I, you guys certainly hit it out of the park um, with the Lenox. Absolutely. When I first saw. The marketing of it, my I instinct was like, "Well, I gotta, I gotta try that cigar." Like that whole midnight sky theme is just—it's beautiful. I mean, say what you will about the marketing for a cigar, a cigar has to stand on its own yep. without a band on it, and this cigar does. I mean, in my opinion, uh, it's one of the better LFD cigars on the market today in terms of my palate, for sure. Uh, it's a medium-bodied cigar. It's not a really strong cigar. Uh, like some of the other LFD offerings, uh, it's very smooth, good balance on it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I was glad you guys brought that project to fruition and, and brought it into retailers. Um, I, I recommend that cigar. And it gave you another medium option uh, in that Lafleur portfolio to follow the 1994, which I thought was great because that's how mm -hmm. I did have it. I did, you know, I looked at. It, I thought it was going to be a very strong cigar looking at it, mm -hmm. but um, it's very flavorful. Is what what you're going to get out of it? Absolutely. Well, I, I think. What I think what you're saying, Will, is important to know, and this is a part of one of the things we do when we educate consumers out on the road and educate, uh, you know, retailers and, and educate our team at La Florida Dominicana. Uh, and you, you gentlemen, are obviously, you know, experts in the field of cigars. You understand the difference between flavor profile and body. Uh, a lot of the times, flavor profile is mistaken for body. Now they're they're interrelated to an extent, uh, but you don't have to have a full flavored cigar that's super full bodied. I um, mean, you also also don't have to have a very full-bodied cigar that has a ton of complexity and flavor. Um, so a lot of the times, as I said, you know, I run into uh, where a cigar is very full-flavored and very complex, and people mistake that oh, that's full-bodied. Uh, so truly, Lenox for me is is not incredibly full-bodied. Uh, I'd say medium, medium plus. Um, towards the end, it gets you know it gets very strong when you get down to that last half an inch that you refuse to put the cigar down, like I do all the time. Uh, so you always get a little head rush with that. But the flavor profiles on it, the complexities uh, are uh, are truly impressive. I mean, I, I like them for a number of reasons. I work for the floor, but as a cigar smoker, that's what I smoke. I smoke our 1994 lines. I smoke, you know, Lenox. That's a nice medium-bodied range for me. Um, you know, in other brands I smoke, I smoke a lot of Davidoff, which I find to be medium-bodied. Um, and I do a lot of Padron as well. Um, so those are all medium-bodied cigars. So it's it's nice to have that in our portfolio is new and exciting product. We've always done medium bodied cigars. We've always done mild, uh, but to have it, our focus of, uh, our focus for new products to be medium, medium plus is uh, something that's great for me as a smoker. Uh, and it's translating out there on the road as well. So yep. recently, John, you've brought back the Coronado line. Um, what's the wrapper binder and filler on this Coronado? That's what we're smoking now. Yep. Coronado. Uh, so it used to be called, Coronado by Lafleur, 
uh, when it originally came out. And what that was was it was Lido's goal in the mid 2000s uh, to have a third brand. We have the LG line, which is Lido Gomez, mm -hmm. which was released to represent our 10 years in business. Uh, if anybody's wondering why on the LG it says 10 on it, uh, that's for the that was originally released for a 10 year anniversary. And uh, we have the La Flor Dominicana line, which is LFD. And Coronado, uh, Lido wanted to expand with a separate brand. Uh, also, so Coronado in 2006, uh, the double Corona size hit the number two cigar uh, of the year in Cigar Aficionado list, making it the number one non-Cuban cigar in the world. From that list, uh, it, it really took off in 2006. Also at the same time, 2004, 5, and 6, uh, that was when Double Lee Arrow started to kind of take over and be the first very full-bodied, uh, really robust and rich Dominican cigar out there. Um, so Coronado kind of took a back seat because Double Lee Arrow has, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we kind of control that niche market of full-bodied and it's kind of set the benchmark for what full-bodied Dominican cigars are about. Um, so Coronado took a back seat in a focus of where we were at and, uh, and it wasn't really identifiable with our lines and our brands that were that were really uh, excelling at that time. Um, so two years back, uh, we, we discontinued this line uh, simply just because it was not getting the focus from us that we needed and we couldn't translate that back and provide the support to our retailers that we needed with the projects that we were doing. Uh, however, we, it was a blend that was very close to Lido's heart. And honestly, one of our more complex blends. Uh, sometimes, you know, I hate using this word, but it kind of has that Cuban-esque flavor profile, medium-bodied, smooth, some spice to it. I'm talking good Cuban cigars. There's a lot of garbage out there, in my opinion. Uh, but it's it's not an, not a super aggressive uh, cigar in terms of body. It go, goes into that line of medium where we're at, again, what we're talking, medium, medium plus. So this uses a Nicaraguan sun-grown wrapper that's been aged for about two and a half years. Uh, it uses Dominican binder and fillers that we grow on our farm. Uh, we use Pleoto Cubano in this, uh, which is a unique one. We use Corojo, uh, and we use some uh, Dominican Sumatra, uh, which is an aggressive, uh, aggressive strain of tobacco uh, in terms of flavor profile. So again, this is some really complex flavors. Uh, and in reality, you know the way the market is: full-bodied cigar smokers smoke the, smoke what they smoke. Uh, you know our Double Lajero guys that smoke Double Lajero, um, and the smokers that smoke those tend to gravitate towards double the arrow on a continual basis. Uh, a lot of new smokers uh, and a lot of the trends that have been out there have been towards the more medium, medium plus complexities uh, and kind of a craft nature of cigars. Uh, and that's led towards more medium body. So it was fitting to bring back Coronado, rebrand it with the LFD on it. So it was identifiable. As you can see, we left some of the colors on there. We also uh, kept the crown that was on the lion that was on the cigar. Uh, so this has truly been a, uh, you know, the timing was right, um, and uh, the blend was fantastic. And, now, is, uh, and is it the same as the, the old blend or similar? Nothing on this cigar has changed. It's okay. exactly the same exactly the same blend uh, that we had back two years ago. Um, and, it's uh, just a different, reality, different crop year, right? Yeah, it's a different crop year. And, you know, in reality, when you have regular production lines, you hear a lot of the time, uh, blends change. That blend changed. I didn't like it. Uh, you know, I don't like that cigar anymore because the blend changed. Uh, in reality, uh, when a blend doesn't change is when you start noticing that it's different. Um, you know, you, you're going to tweak the percentages of different uh, types of tobacco you're putting into there. Uh, you never change what types you're using, uh, but you're going to use different percentages of it. You may use a little more Lijero one year than you used uh, in year past to make that flavor profile taste the same. So in reality, when cigars don't change or there's a lack of supply of products uh, or... Uh, you know, to put into it lack of supplies, uh, that's when cigars change and truly don't taste the same. Uh, if you're constantly working a blend with different percentages of the tobacco that you would put in there uh, that you assign for that blend, uh, that's when cigars stay the same and consistency is there. Um, so this blend here, uh, the, the, as I said, the only thing that changes on this is the ratios to make sure it tastes exactly the same the way a Coronado tasted when it came out in 2006. Um, so same exact tobaccos, different ratios and crop years, obviously. Uh, but these are blended together uh, tirelessly on a continual basis to ensure that they taste exactly the same. Excellent. Uh, well, I, we're running a little over yeah. time, so... Um, I got one more question. Yeah, always. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's, no, no, it's no, not no. you, John. It's we're, not you. Yeah. Uh, one more question. So, John, um, I know you've also released the Airbender Maduro. You've also released the, uh, the Salamones this year. 
Is there any other projects that are coming up uh, or anything we didn't cover real quick you want to talk about? There's uh, there's something I brought. I know this is your anniversary, so I wanted to have something that was unique and special for you guys. Um, last year, we started uh, – I'm a huge football fan. Uh, so is everyone that works for our company, Lido, uh, Inez, Tony. Uh, we we go all Pats. are big – Go Pats, right, John? You're a Pats yeah. fan. Yeah, go Pats, bro. What a game last night. Anyway, <laughs> so – Last year, I got this idea. I, I wanted, I wanted, essentially, I wanted to go out to the Super Bowl and I wanted to do some stuff that was cigar related around there. It's such a great opportunity to be with cigar smokers. I'm like, you know, what can we do that's unique and special? So we came out with the special football edition, which was exclusively for Arizona retailers uh, as the Super Bowl was in Glendale last year. Now, it's not associated with the Super Bowl, uh, it's just associated with fans of the game of football. Um, so we had a cigar that was a 6x50 uh, that had a football on it. Uh, this year, there's a lot of fans of football that will be in California in the Santa Clara area. Uh, so we, we haven't officially announced this until this moment. And I'm going to put this up on the screen. I sent a picture to Will, so it'll be up on, uh, on the, the Stogie Geeks and yep. up on Cigar Coop. Uh, but this year's edition, we're officially announcing here today. You heard it here first. The, 2000, the uh, special football edition... For California, Santa Clara, is a Ecuadorian Habano Maduro wrapper, dark Habano, with Connecticut accents, Nicaraguan binder, Dominican filler, and it looks just like that, if you can see it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So is that a different blend than last year? Completely different blend. Something special. Obviously, you can see that we kept the football on it. We have the extra accents. We did not use Habano last year. Uh, that was a Sumatra wrapper on there. This is a real dark Habano. Uh, these will be coming in 10-count boxes, uh, but this is something that's really a piece of art. I'm um, really looking forward to have uh, to have that out in California uh, and proud to announce it here with you guys on your anniversary. We'll make sure that you get some to smoke, too. Is it? Uh, so that'd, be awesome. that'd be awesome. That looks awesome. I can't wait. Is that, so that's exclusive to the state of California or just Santa Clara? How's that going to work? Uh, that'll be exclusive to the whole state of California. Uh, what we do is uh, we, we want to have we want to have an area where everybody can get their hands on it in that state, and it's not just uh, to a small region, uh, which becomes problematic. Uh, so uh, it's available uh, to all football fans in the state of California, and all of those retailers uh, will be available to sell that if you're in other states and you're interested in that cigar. Uh, it's something that. Uh, really successful for us last year and a really fun project. And I said, as a, as a football fan and especially as a Patriots fan, it's going to be fun to smoke those cigars when the Patriots go for the 19 and 0 Super Bowl victory with Tom Brady as MVP. That's right. Wow. You know it. That's a great idea. Get your boss to make a cigar and get to go out to the game. That's right. That's, that's a good. Great, I, like that's your, a I like your thinking, that's John. That's brilliant. That's awesome. <laughs> well, John, thank you very much for appearing on the Stogie Geeks. Uh, I'm sorry, we're a little behind here on time, but it was wonderful having you. Um, we we'll have you in the studio yeah, back Yeah, we can't wait sure. to have you in the studio when you're back in the New England area. Always love being on with you guys. We appreciate everything that you do for the industry um, and informing uh, consumers and the, your listeners. Uh, and congratulations uh, on your anniversary with this. And uh, good luck for the rest of the day. You guys are in for the long haul. Thanks, we, John. We really appreciate take it. Care. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back. Cue up our next interview with Victor Vitali. So stay tuned. <laughs> 